Lovely way to begin our service. Um, and thank you to Johanna and to June for stepping in at the last minute. I think the microphone is on, right? Yeah. Good. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, we would like to acknowledge, to begin this service, that it's being held by a community that gathers on the stolen traditional lands of the Massachusetts, Nipmuc, Pawtucket, and Wampanoag people. We pay respect to those indigenous peoples who lost their lives in the colonization of this land and recognize that these indigenous tribes are still today facing violations of sovereignty, territory, and water. We also give thanks for the earth we walk upon, the waters, the life-giving plants, and all earth's creatures, as well as the winds, sun, moon, and stars. We recognize this is just a first step in moving toward right relationship with native peoples and healing of the earth. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the First Parish Church of Stowe and Acton, a welcoming and spiritual community. Uh, I am Neil Saunders, and I'm chair of the worship committee here at FPC. For those visiting FPC for the first time, we welcome you. Please let us know you were here by filling out one of our visitor information cards in the pews and hand it to an usher or drop it in the plate. Our minister and staff are taking a well-deserved holiday, so please feel free to ask me or any of my fellow worship committee members if you would like more information about FPC. And if you would like a large print order of service or hymnal, or an assisted listening device, please ask our ushers. Our assisted listening device is a small radios which anyone is welcome to use to listen to the service from another space in or around our building. After the service, please join us for some social time here in the sanctuary or in a breakout room if you're joining us online. I'd like to draw your attention to the announcements in our order of service and also invite you to check out our webpage for more information and to sign up for our newsletter 
and email alerts. And now, as we prepare to welcome in a new year by celebrating the ancient Scottish tradition of Hogmanay, let us move into a time of community, singing, and worship. Our opening words are by Paul Vachon. As we come together, let us pause to take stock of the year now concluding, its moments of happiness and hurt, its times of accomplishment and failure, and its occasions of inspiration and fear. We add these experiences to the tapestries of our years and look bravely toward a new horizon. And now I'll ask June to come up and light our chalice as we reflect on these words by UU Minister Reverend Lois Van Leer. We light this chalice on the brink of a new year, letting go of what has been, open and hopeful for what may come, renewed, restored, ready to live life fully anew. We, may we move forward with intention. Please rise as you are able for hymn number 346. Come sing a song with me and then remain standing for our covenant and affirmation. Let us recite together our covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another.
Good morning. Can you hear me okay? I have a very quiet voice. Uh, growing up in Scotland in the 50s, I have very fond memories of New Year's Eve, or Hogmanay as we called it. At that time, it was a much bigger holiday than Christmas. There were and still are a lot of traditions associated with Hogmanay. For example, you had to see out the old year and see in the new year. It was considered bad luck if you went to bed early. I often think uh, what would have happened if we had not seen in the new year? Would it have been December 31st forever? K kind of like Groundhog Day. However, I practiced this tradition well into my adult years just to be safe. People cleaned their homes in a somewhat fanatical way in the lead up to Hogmanay. It was, more impo it was really important to begin the year with a clean house. This is one tradition I was happy to let go. <laughs> On New Year's Eve, the time leading up to midnight was spent in a very different way from the hours after midnight. The time prior to midnight was spent reflecting on the old year and preparing for the new year. Food would be prepared, the table would be set, glasses would be placed on the table for a toast, but nothing would be eaten or drank until after the bells striking midnight. The bells were actually Big Ben that was broadcast on the radio or television. Just before midnight, it was common for people to open their back door of the house to let the old year out, and I still know people who do that. After midnight, people danced and sang until the wee hours of the morning. Children would be allowed to stay up and celebrate. It was a rite of passage, and they were given ginger cordial and shortbread. I can still taste the cordial. Neighbors would visit unannounced and would be welcomed in. This is what we call first footing. In other words, the first foot to cross your doorstep. And if the person first person was to visit was a dark-haired man, then that was considered good luck. This dates back to the days of the Viking invasion, most of whom were light-haired light -haired people and possibly carrying an axe, not someone you would welcome into your home. People who went first footing would never be empty-handed. They would bring something to eat and drink and possibly a lump of coal. This was hopefully to ensure that you would not be thirsty, hungry, or cold in the coming year. The only tradition that I have kept is my refusal to hang a new wall calendar until January 1st, as it is considered bad luck. So as I speak, my new wall calendar is sitting on my dining room table waiting to be hung tomorrow. In Scotland, one would never wish people a happy new year and until it actually was the new year, something that was also considered bad luck. However, I have adopted the practice here of wishing people a happy new year whenever I meet them, no matter the date. So I wish you all a happy, healthy and peaceful new year. This is the time in our service for joys and sorrows. So. I welcome Ingrid. Good morning. I'm Ingrid Holcomb. I'm a member of the lay ministry team here at First Parish Church. I um, would like to just say quickly, um, the lay ministers are here for you if you should need us. You see us lighting candles in the mornings as we do here. And you also see us at various times helping out um, Cindy and others in the church. But we want to spread the word that you can just call us anytime you need um, a spiritual presence and anytime that you just want somebody to bring, maybe bring a chalice and sit with you and listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we'll hold all these joys and sorrows in our hearts as well as those of today. Thank you. Thank you. 
will share a prayer from a winter blessing by Rebecca Parker. In the shadowed quiet of winter's light, earth speaks softly of her longing because the wild places are in tears. Come, she cries to us, kneel down here on the frosty grass and feel the prayer buried in the ground. Bend your ear to my heart and listen hard. Love this world, she whispers. Distill peace from the snow and water the cities with mercy. Weave wonder from the forest and clothe grief with beauty. Rest in the rhythm of the turning year. Trace the bending arc, rounding the curve toward justice, and vow anew to do no harm. The winter trees stand watch, haloed in the last gleams of the slanting sun. Glory sings here. Heaven echoes the call. Repeat the sounding joy. Make your life an answer. Bow, praise, rise. This is The Passing of the Year by Robert Service. My glass is filled, my pipe is lit, my den is all a cozy glow. And snug before the fire I sit and wait to feel the old year go. I dedicate to solemn thought amid my true unthinking days, this so sober moment sadly fraught with much blame with little praise. Old year, upon the stage of time, you stand to bow your last adieu. A moment and the prompter's chime will ring the curtain down on you. Your mien is sad, your step is slow. You falter as a sage in pain, yet turn, old year, before you go and face your audience again. And you, O oh neighbour on my right, so sleek, so prosperously clad, what see you in that aged white that makes you smile so gay and glad? What opportunity unmissed? What golden gain? What pride of place? What splendid hope? O oh optimist, what read you in that withered face? And so from face to face I flit, the countless eyes that stare and stare, some are with approbation lit, and some are shadowed with despair. Some show a smile and some a frown, some joy and hope, some pain and woe. Enough, oh, ring the curtain down, old weary year, it's time to go. My pipe is out, my glass is dry, my fire is almost ashes too. But once again, before you go, and I prepare to meet the new, old year, a parting word that's true. For we've been comrades, you and I, I thank God for each day of you. There, bless you now, old year, goodbye. Our offertory plate for this final month of the year is being shared with FPC's very own guest table. As always, your generous contributions are very much appreciated. And there is a slight change to the program. Instead of green sleeves, Trish will play the flowers of the forest.
And now it's time for our burning bowl ceremony. A new year calls us forward, filled with mystery. As we turn toward the new year, we take a final glimpse of the past year and reckon with all that it held for us. Baskets will be moving through the aisles now from our ushers, and they'll give you something called flash paper, it's like, like this. It's specially treated paper that evaporates in fire, leaving no ash or residue. And I can assure you we tested this out, and it, it, really, does, it really does disappear very quickly. So we're going to ask you to take one of the papers and reflect on the year behind you. Consider what you might leave behind today, burning it brightly so that it changes form and disappears. What parts of our lives, what things, ideas, people, ways of living have become obstacles to our becoming the people we want to be, the people we need to be? What's holding you back? What's getting in the way of you living as fully as you'd like to? What might you burn away? What would you like to relinquish? So now, please, write a word or two on the paper. Nobody will see it except you, the flame, and the universe. Although if you feel comfortable doing so, you're welcome to share it with us. So for the next few minutes, you're invited to come forward, put your paper into the bowl, and use the lighter to burn it. The flames will envelop it quickly and safely, and then you can let it go. And if you prefer, I can burn the paper for you. So the three of us will begin. So we're going to write a word or a couple of words uh, on the paper. Okay. So, um, this is the point at which I'd like as many of you as feel comfortable. <coughs> and as I said, you can have me do it, or you can, um, you can do it yourself. Maybe we come up from the left-hand side here, and then we'll work our way around. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, no, put, no. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the bowl first. Get the stool, get the stool, get the stool. Thank you. 
May what you have released here be forever gone from your spirit and cease to trouble you. May you be relieved and renewed, ever mindful that love is always more powerful than fear and that compassion is the key to freedom from resentment. Our final hymn is number 95, There is More Love Somewhere. Please rise as you are able.
by Kathy McGowan. As we go forward from here, may we be ever open to the beauty that is all around us. May we remember that the mighty oak can be found in the smallest acorn, and may we find hope where there appears none. This is part of life's magic that is all around us. May we find strength by having faith that we are surrounded by beauty, oneness, love, connection, and the magic that is life. Let this connectedness carry us into our next becoming. Keep love and hope alive. So, um, it's very traditional in Scotland to sing Auld Lang Syne, although not usually till after midnight, but that's okay. Um, what we thought, if people are comfortable, if we could make a circle around you know, each aisle and around the back, and the words will be on the screen, and um, there are five verses, and I don't know at least three of them, so I'll be looking up at the screen. The last verse that starts now here's a hand, my trusty friend. Normally people will cross hands and hold their hands of the people beside them. I could demonstrate, but I think it's, oh sorry. So people should cross hands at that point. And so if, if you're comfortable with that, then please come forward. Who's laughing? <laughs> Oh, sorry. 